So we're live. Are we in the fate? We're in the groups. I don't know. No idea. Because I don't wait. I'm looking to share it now. I mean, I'll go ahead and share it if you want me to. Yeah, I got it. Hold on. Jay, so, Jay I can't would... hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Okay. Um, Recapping with the bros. All right. So, so are, are we live in Facebook, Jay? Yes, we are live. And yes. uh, let's get some invites going. Are you going to post it? Yeah. All right. All right, I'm back. It's hard because my f one thing I hate about iPhones is you can't split screen stuff like. On an Android, you can do multiple things in multiple windows at once. Yeah, once like, I leave mm -hmm. this shit, yeah. So I, I got if I want if I want some research, I got to do that pre. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. <laughs> see, so I'm going I, off. Can you can you guys still see me? Nope. All right, it says I'm not there. All right. See, yeah. So it looks bad. I'm just posting on you now. Make sure that opens up properly. I'm blind too, so if you guys Not catch me, if you guys catch me squinting, you guys catch me squinting like this, it's because I can't see shit. Yeah. So y'all gonna jump off for the NBA or what? Or I think Jay's tagging people. Yeah, we, what what time that. is the game at? I don't even know. Oh, that's not till like eight Five, tonight. Yeah. Game Ooh, tonight? And game is who's playing tonight? Bucks and Nets. Nets. Bucks. That's the only game I'm looking forward to in the East. That's gonna be the best series. Of course, think, and it might be the best series of the playoffs. To be honest. Only if the Bucks win. Oh my the next, page! I just, it's on my I page. Would, I would love to see people be all hurt that the Nets and the Lakers both didn't make it to the finals. That would be great. I mean, I mean, sports books would take a crazy hit if that happened. Well, good. That was supposed know? to be a big yeah. game. Good. Yeah. That's they'll, the thing be hurt. they'll be hurt how after are, that. How are we supposed to bet on the Jake Paul? For the Logan Paul fight, when there's no, and there's no winner, and no there's judges. no refs. Yeah. Right. Vegas is taking people's know. money. Yeah, hey, well, you know it is. At this it is. point, right? At this point, because I was and looking people it up. People are gonna right. spend money to watch it too. That's the thing. You gotta bet right. nine, You gotta bet nine hundred on Floyd just to win a hundred bucks. Fuck that. Nine hundred on Floyd just to win a hundred. Yeah. Yep. Just win a hundred. I was about to tell my dad, listen, He's... put nine grand down on Floyd. You're guaranteed to make a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> guaranteed to make a thousand. Just give me 300, dad. I'll right. take that. Just 300. That's funny. Yeah. So, just going to recap with the bros, guys. We got a crazy sports week. We got a fight tomorrow. Mayweather versus Jake Paul. Uh, we got some sports things going on. MLB is heating up. We got Red Sox versus Yankees. Got the trade day hey, one hey. coming up. MLB Drive actually. MLB Drive actually coming up too, guys. John Rocker, he may go number one. And uh, what's his name? Jake Lighter. Is that Al Lighter's son's name? John. Jake, I think, yeah. or Jack. Something like that. And then we got yeah. um ML we got the home run race going on right now. We got Tatis Jr., Vlad Jr., Cunha Jr., NBA playoffs, game seven. We got Bucks Nets, Sixers Hawks. Not talk Nuggets, Sixers, and also the NBA draft lottery. What's up? My name is Jay, Madman Jay. We are with B and my boy Christian. Yo. Introduce AKC yourself, guys. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, so let's get this started. Let's get this started. B Rouse, we'll start with you. Red Sox versus Yankees. We got some things hanging up there. One of the greatest sports rivalries we got. You guys won round one. You guys won round two today? Uh, I don't know, but, you know, I think I, you yeah. know, I hate to say it. I hate to really say this, you know, this early. I was talking to somebody yesterday about this. It's like it kind of feels like 
the Yankees are in a must-win type situation right now, right? Because I mean, what, they dropped eight of the last 11, I believe it is. You know, their offense is sputtering type situation. Um, and, and, and the crazy part about that is you would think this would be the Red Sox right now because coming in, they, they were the ones that would look at like, you know, offensively, they would struggle, that type of situation. But we're talking about the Yankees and the mystique of the Yankees. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they still got Judge. They still got a nice lineup, man. And no I think pitching. When, right. But once Kluber comes back, though, what happens? You know what I mean? So let's see. You know, I'm, well, I'm not ready got, to write that. One pitcher. Two, one got pitcher. <laughs> I know, man. But, I mean, I'm still not ready right. to write them. And well, I, got think, a I think that's the thing. That's what I was going to say. So, you know? if you're the Yankees right now, you lose this, you lose this series. Is Judge expandable? You took him for at least two pitchers. No, John you do that? No. no. Yeah, I'm – hell no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Andrew, like, nobody, yeah. Nobody's trading. Who's taking that contract? Nobody, nobody's trading. That's what I'm saying. Nobody's trading. <laughs> <Gary Sanders. laughs> nobody's trading. Nobody's trading. Judge is much more valuable. He might be, but, you, I yeah. mean, this is that – But the, you know, we're digging into something like got certain guys to me that are untouchable, right? Like, Wait, had a whole argument about, like, mm-hmm. being, uh, Dame being untouchable. Like, I cannot believe people are actually saying, oh, trade Dame. No, no. Do not trade Dame. Whatever. I don't I don't, I don't, don't mm-hmm. see that. Do not trade Judge. You don't do that. Yeah. That's crazy. You find somebody else that's more tradable to me. Mm-hmm. All right, maybe maybe you, you throw Kluber out there and see how many pitches oh. you get out of him or something. Kluber. I don't know. Somebody. Mm-hmm. But not Judge. Well, that's mm-hmm. prospects. That's I mean, prospects. Gary, yeah, yeah. Gary, I'm thinking you gotta Sanchez you gotta think this season though. You're thinking you're thinking on. I maybe I am. So thinking for this time, season though, you need a, you need a guy that's gonna do something now. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna. We'll sell see. Judge. We'll see. It'd be interesting to think about that. Red Sox race the Yankees. I will sell Judge Judge to the highest bidder that's gonna give me two starters or a starter that's and reliever. Crazy. Who's pitching? For the, who's pitching for the Yankees tonight? I have absolutely no idea, to be honest, man. Like the Red Sox roster right now. I man, don't even I know. I have no. I have no idea who's pitching for them. I'll nah, I don't. <laughs> and that's the thing about it, too, man. You got a yeah, ball. I know how Rafael Rodriguez Denver's right now. He has about fourteen home runs. Lighten it up, yeah. And he's right there in the RBI race, too, man. Like, I mean, like, and and I was yeah. saying that too. Uh, the three, four, five hitters for the Red Sox are the reason why they're even doing this right now, man. I mean, if you take apart their lineup outside mm-hmm. of those right. guys, yeah, they're really not doing a lot. And Avaldi is seven and two right now, and we're not even talking about him as a young candidate. Ooh. But he's only given up two home runs this year. He's pitching well. He was Sox in this. I mean, because of Rob, he does mm-hmm. some pitching. I think he's five hundred this year. So, you know, and the Sox bullpen has been surprised. At least. We'll see what happens. I don't. I don't. I. Don't I was. I like, was watching. Go ahead. I was watching the game last night, and you guys had Suara Mara out there. Dude, throwing and gas. He threw a split. Throwing gas, and then he just throws a split change like eighty-seven, and it's just like it, it's untouchable. Right. It's right. untouchable. It's just untouchable. You can't. I think uh, Red Sox right now they got they got too many advantages. And if I'm if I'm the Yankees right now, after I lose this series against them, if I lose the next one, I'm possibly thinking of retooling, getting ready for next season, and getting things right. You gotta write the ship as fast as possible. Don't want to give up. That's not the Yankees' way. You always want to win, 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 win. That's why they have so many World, early World though, Series. This but early. That, that's a that's a tough. After the one, second man, series. I- after the second series, I'm not selling, but I have to retool. So somebody has to go. Someone has to oh, go. I'm sure and I have to make, make my decision move. then after that second series. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, after the second series, that's it. Be somebody else. Somebody has to be sacrificed. All right. So let's let's go yeah. to something else. Like, well, like, like your boy, uh, so, Lad, competing for a triple crown right now, right? You have Vlad Guerrero. Compete for a triple up. crown right now. Is what? But aren't you? There was something you wanted. He has to what? Touch Seventeen home runs. Right? So, yeah, there's three guys with that, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, sir. So we got Vlad Jr., Atis Jr., and Acuna Jr. Um, hit 17 home runs so far this season. 
all three Otani. are on pace to hit over 60 home runs this year. Otani with 15, and he's not even an everyday pitcher. Um, it's getting a little bit out, maybe getting a little extra home runs. Um, each guy is only six home runs away from 23, which will be Sammy Sosa's total in the year of 98 at the end of June. How likely we can get at least these guys to hit 60 home runs by the year? Hey, not likely. I don't think I don't think any of them hit 60 this year. I don't think any, a single one of them hits over 60. I think 57, will be, 57 maybe tops. The thing is, none of those those guys aren't okay, okay. like they're not typical power hitters. I mean, they are power hitters, but you look mm-hmm. at someone like Judge, like that's why Judge was the last dude to, to approach sixty. Like, I don't, I don't know. know I man. Over the I last what five as years? The season goes on, your your body you start getting tired. Like, it's hard to maintain that as it gets mm-hmm. hotter. The dog days of August are coming up. July, like, it's. I don't know. We'll we'll see. It's a mm-hmm. great pace, but I, I don't think anyone tops fifty seven. I don't either. I think they'll okay. all kind of cool off and stuff at some point. Each one of them is probably gonna hit mm-hmm. as well. You know what I mean? Go on a home run drought, that sort of thing. Yeah. But <laughs> I mean I don't know if we'll ever see anybody touch. I'll tell you what I game. think. It's likely that again. The person I see most likely to hit to hit it is Tatis, and I'll explain why. Go ahead. Okay. Tatis in his first 162 games, he's hit 52 home runs. He plays in the smallest ballpark, pretty much in MLB. Right now, he has 17 home runs this season, and he's only played 41 games. So he. So his rate right now is pretty much two home runs a game. I mean, every you know every other game. Why is he so, so few games? with that pacing hurt? and him doing that, he's got hurt. He's got hurt. So, and it's heating up, and it's a hot, it's hotter a little bit longer in San Diego than it is anywhere else, well, besides Phoenix and things like that. I think he may be on pace to hit sixty. He may be the only guy that does it. Acuna, Acuna, I love that. Um, his hands always get hurt. He gets hit too much by the Marlins. They don't like him. He has too many home runs against them. So he'll probably, uh, you know, unfortunately be a little while. And um, Vlad Jr., he's going to cool off a little bit. Uh, the Blue Jays, they're, besides him and Bochette and a couple other guys, they're, they really aren't playing as well as they were in the beginning of the season in the first month. And they um, it'll be interesting to see what they do there because they, they got so much young talent. But then they're so close. They're so close to finally winning that division again. And we'll be interested to see what they do. I'm taking Toronto as my sleeper. Chicago is obviously out there. But I thought St. Louis would be a team in the World Series. That's who I had picked. I had Chicago, St. Louis. And St. Louis looks like they're about to fall out of it. It's going to be a two-team division, two team division race right there with Chicago and Milwaukee, I think. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you, the, uh, I think the the NL East is really confusing because like you've got so many teams right there. What six games separates first from last, if I'm right, and uh, none mm-hmm. of them really like up that far above five hundred. Excuse me, five hundred. So I don't know. They uh, mm-hmm. you might see all them selling because only one team makes the playoffs this year, and that might be the Mets. I don't. Might be the Braves. It's hard mm-hmm. telling. I think it's going to be them two and nobody else, to be honest. So the division, I mean, that league, I would say, is probably going to be somebody like the Giants, the Dodgers, or the Padres. I don't see anybody else going. And then mm-hmm. the AL. I'll hit on Chicago. some notes, too. What's that? With that, the NL East. Is um I believe they're the division that play has played the less amount of games, being yes. impacted by uh, rain delays and COVID and things like that. So they've been the Absolutely. um the one division that has the most to catch up because they haven't played as many games as any other division. Yep. And then you were saying about Chicago because I got something interesting to say about them. I'm gonna add on at the end when you get done. 
I, I think I think they're going to win the American League, but we'll see. I mean, they've survived injuries, and they still got one of the better leagues. And, I mean, one of the better t- uh, records in the league. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'll add on to that. Chicago, I was watching the um, White Sox game last night, and in an instant, the game went from 1-1 to 5-1, and one, and they did it by doing all the little things and then having right. their big bats be, be the big bats, Tim Anderson, Yarmin Mercedes, and um, Jose Abreu. And when they came up to bat, they all knocked the guys in various different ways, and they have right. a lot they of guys on that team and that, knock that, that play. Yeah, yeah, right. And then the one thing that I've seen them do that I haven't seen a lot of teams do is they actually give Dallas Keiko run support. They score the most runs with Dallas Keiko on the mound. And they're 21 I, and 9 currently, or 26 and 9 at home. I think they're plus they're, minus. They're a hard team to beat. Yeah. They're plus yeah, minus. Yeah, they're ridiculous it's, too, man. I think the highest in the league. Yeah, it's That's an interesting right. team that you got. Uh, if you love baseball and you love to see, you know, the little things, you want to see the big things at times, too. You want to see great glove work, great pitching, and excelling at everybody doing their job. The White Sox is the team to watch. They really are exciting. I liked that game last night. It was really interesting. And that um, that whole division that they're playing, the AL Central, isn't isn't easy anymore either because you actually got the Royals playing decent baseball right now. Twins are the twins. You know, they right. – they have their upswings and they have their downswings, and then you have the um teams, the Indians in the um AL Central, who also have been playing pretty decent. But, but I, I don't, I don't know a that. Lot of any, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that any of those teams will be competitive. <laughs> and like honestly, I think Chicago is going to be the only team that makes the playoffs out of that division. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I, I agree. It's just it's just to show you the grit that they're going against. They're not playing a, a cakewalk. Everybody believes the easiest division in baseball. I'm trying to talk about the division a little bit. It's not the easiest. It's just no, it's not. They're, but, they're just doing their job. They're just doing their job. That's what they're, right. they're doing better than everybody else. <laughs> right, and that's the thing, uh, man. Like they generate runs and they can just smack their shit out of the ball when they need to. So. And, yeah, and I the mean, pitching is great. Tony, that is a testament to Larusa. There you go. <laughs> He's about Tony, to face it. Tony may be a madman. He may be losing his mind, not protecting his players and you know defending them, but he still understands how to manage baseball. I mean, he can pitch right. out when he has to. He'll keep them in when he needs to. I mean, he does everything right. Still, it's it's amazing to see. You can call him a drunk if you want to, but he's a smart one. <laughs> 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 All right, Christian. Let's get to this. Lost coming up, you Rockies fan. I need some pieces from you, man. So you gonna give me some pieces? What are you gonna get? We got some pieces that you may like. What do you yeah. want, and who do we get? Uh, well, I mean, there's really no one that I know. We're not gonna get any big name players. We're trading away anybody that we can. Blackman, like I was telling you earlier, is going for. He hasn't been a, a shadow of himself in about two years. The hitting down for mm-hmm. Trevor Story. That Trevor Story might be the next guy to go. You know, at, mm-hmm. if if somebody wants him, because we need to be in complete. We, we have a new GM. We got rid of Bidrich, who's ruined the franchise for the last fifteen years. Um, you know, it's got to be a culture change because Colorado is known as a place where they aren't committed to winning, which we aren't. We we fluked into a World Series appearance in 07, and we've had two wild card <laughs> playoffs since then against the Brewers and the Dodgers, who were no comparison to. So it's got to be a complete rebuild, man. They put out Trevor mm-hmm. Story. Uh, we got German Marquez pitching, which is the only – I mean, if you can pitch well at Coors Field, I think that really boosts your stock anywhere else. So mm-hmm. a guy like Kyle Freeland – Who's got it? I think Coors Field can really mess with pitchers' psyches too. Like it can really ruin, you know, a pitcher. There's guys who are never the same after pitching. At a, I'm all high. I'm fucking up the camera. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so I, it's it's really it's going to start with new with new management because. And you know how new management is. They like to get out with the old and in with the new. So I right, expect right, to right. see a fire sale after 
after this season is over and uh, the Rockies are going to be bad for for a few years after this. I don't think anyone had any expectations that we would be good, but to see Arenado just, you know, for us. Well, he wanted to dance. He wanted to dance for the Cardinals. He was auditioning. You know, he was sending videos over to making web gyms and things like that, and that's acceptable, I, like I guess. That's but the thing. I don't blame him for the but he was he was like, hey, I want to be a Cardinal, but I'm a Rocky. I mean, you know, it's all right. <laughs> that, that's the thing is, like, what did the Rockies ever do to reward their star players? That's the thing is that instead of committing to build around – I mean, granted, Tulowitzki was hurt a lot, but – we made a World Series with the best shortstop in baseball at the time. Like, we had the opportunity to build something, and instead we were like a 68-win team again two years later. So, mm-hmm. or three years mm-hmm. later. So, I, it's it more so you guys may need a change in culture or in the, in, on the field or in the office. No, I mean, offensively, court, like, there's no problem hitting the ball. Like our, we've always been a great. No matter, we have hitters throughout our time. It's pitching. We need somehow to find elite talent that can pitch well at Coors Field for a few years. That's really all it comes mm-hmm. down to. I mean, you look at our guys with our ERAs. They're always in the mid fours, like low fives. It's, you know, it's always a shootout when you come here. And then you look at the splits, the hitting. The, the road splits of the pitch <laughs> that we do have and their night and day difference. Yeah. Uh, well, I've always I've always wondered why the Rockies weren't one of those teams that did what the um the Mets did when they had a lot of pitches out earlier this year and what the Rays did for a lot of last season that brought them to the World Series using multiple relievers throughout the game. Um that way you save the arms and you keep ERAs down, but for whatever reason, it's been one of the few teams that hasn't, you know, put that in place. To, that's one of the main reasons why the Tampa Bay Rays did it because it was the same thing. It's, one, it's a small ballpark. You hit, you hit a catwalk as a double. You hit that catwalk as a home run. You know, it's, it's all those different rules there, so it's really hard to pitch at. So you know, that's what they put in place, and it worked for them. But the Rockies, for a reason, has never done it. I always wondered, but. I'm going to get back to my main question, the trade deadline. And a guy that I love right now, he's playing his best ball right now for us. I do believe this may be something that can possibly happen. Um, it's either going to be Austin Riley or Dansby Swanson that can yeah. move from us to help us because we need we, we need more. Um, right. I don't know if we'll take your picture, but Trevor Story may be a guy that may be moved. And that would be a really big move. And I see if we move uh, Dansby Swanson, Trevor Story plugs right in the shortstop. We got one of the best infields in baseball at that point. So that would be really good. Um, you got to think about that. You got Freeman first, I'll be in. Story at shortstop, and Raleigh at third. Yeah, Story moves for you guys. Crazy. Though. What prospects do you have? We well, we have we have uh, as far as prospects wise, if we had to trade a prospect. Unfortunately, I don't think it will be Drew Waters, but if it was Drew Waters, that's the number three prospect right now. Um, and then another big prospect for us. Give me a second. That's all. That's what we'd be looking at to rebuild. Yeah, and I, I know we can't do shit. We well, Dansby is 20. Dansby is only 27, and Raleigh is only uh, 25. So they're both. Pop Che, that's a, uh, and then uh, as far as pitching, we got Cal Mueller for number, he's our number five Mueller. prospect. Mueller. Yeah. All right. And, no and baseball let me, talk. Hey, Let's do the NBA. Say, Let's hold on. up. Hold up. One second. I, I want to ask you a question because I'm actually watching MLB Network, watching the uh, Cardinals and <laughs> Reds right now, right? And when was the last time that you had two guys bat one two for the batting title? Right now you got what's his name, Nick. I can't say his last name. And what is Nick Castellanos and yes. Nick, um Cal Winker or something like that? Right. They're yeah. both batting yeah, one Nick two. Yeah. 
And I yes, don't know. Sir. That oh, you brought that up. Hey, I was looking at that. I was actually looking at that. That was pretty interesting. I didn't know. Uh, so Nicholas Castellanos, um, I maybe said his name a little bit wrong, but interesting enough, I totally didn't know who he was. And I am a video game player and I play MLB the show. And I unlocked him and I was like, this guy is wrecking. So I looked him up. Right. And I was like, man, he's Batting killing it this year. But he's like, I was like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, but he's on the Reds. And I felt so bad for him. He's in like 14 home runs. Him and Winker right. both had 14 home runs and hitting like over 300. And they're on the Reds. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> All right, hey, one more time. That is crazy. To go into basketball. So. <laughs> Who do you got as MVP right now, actually? I mean, it's got to be Otani. Well, Otani is AL for sure. He really went in right. Yeah. Team, but yeah. Dude, that dude's the most valuable player. Yeah. You, well, you can, I mean, you can win the MVP as a pitcher. So I definitely believe he's in the race. He has to be the MVP um, candidate right now. He's the him and of or course Vlad Junior, who almost right. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's almost one of those round this year. Those are my top two picks. And, right. and after them, it gets really, it gets kind of interesting because then you'll start looking into more who's more important to their team and things like DeGrom that. Is, um, DeGrom is having a crazy season. Man, I wish the Mets were yeah. bad so they'd be sellers because I would love to see the sellers. Uh, <laughs> if DeGrom keeps, keeps a sub one ERA, I mean, where do you. Is that even possible? He's sub. He's sub one point zero right now, isn't he? Yeah, I, I do believe so. Dude, it's like, if that guy maintains yeah. that for the for the whole year, what? That's got to be major consideration, don't you think? That's no, not absolutely. Even done. Well, you would. The thing that the thing that unfortunately hurts him is that he'll have that ERA with no run support. Also, he gives up one run, he'll lose the game. Or he won't right. get the decision, so it really sucks because right. their bullpen right. is so bad, and right. they have like the most injuries right now in MLB. But they're somehow still leading their division, so that that's a testament to the team and a, and a manager. But the thing with Degrom, he he has to get to ten wins and have less than five losses. You can't go ten and six with a sub. One ERA and one MVP. I'm sorry. I just can't. Uh, no. I can't. I, I can't accept it. I can't accept it. Yeah. But that's a Cy Young. I can't accept it. But if he goes 10 and 3. <laughs> yeah, that's a Cy Young. That's a Cy Young season. Yeah, that's a Cy Young season. But, I mean, I, I just can't give uh, it to him, man. I can't. But. Uh, Cy Young is going to be. That's going to be interesting at the end of the year, too. So, I'll wait a little bit for that. Because even if he does win 10 games and he. Unfortunately, like I said, they just, they just, yeah, that team, they, they don't give them any run support. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's historic. If you look it up, you're, you're going to hey, be look, wild. Um, and I hate to plug my boy, but I'm telling you, he's my dark horse kick for Cy Young in the AL. If he keeps pitching the way he is, man, Evaldi might be a candidate too. So we'll see what happens. But anyway. Yes, the young man from the Red Sox. Yes, sir. All right. Let's get it going. NBA playoffs. We got game seven coming up. Clippers versus the Mavs. You guys got this year. Easy. I, well, man, first I off. the Mavs before the series started, but I don't think the Clippers are going to lose at home. I don't think. I don't think <laughs> Nobody's won at home yet. I know. That's why I don't think they're going to. The if the road team wins this, this was the most crazy series of all time. And, all right, so first off, first time ever in That's NBA history that the, the road team has won the first six games, right? That's crazy. Right. That's what I'm saying. If they did it Insane. for seven games, that would be um, – it would be – I've wow. never been so sure about both teams winning this series in my life. <laughs> right. I was like, it's going to be bad. Now I'm like, there's no way the Clippers are going to lose. Right. Because, I mean, right, when right. they took the first it's two in damn – uh, LA, you're like, oh shit, it might be a sweep. Then they come back with the next two, you're like, oh, Dallas is done. <laughs> and then, oh, well, never mind. Right. Forget it. I'm done. I just checked out and was like, okay, I'm just going to enjoy this series and stop picking who's going to win it. Right. So, I mean, I, I, I got, it, I it comes Clippers, down to one thing. Clippers, it comes down. <laughs> it comes down to one thing. 
and it's up to one guy. And if he decides to play basketball, if the big unicorn decides to show up, he had like what nine points yesterday. Seven and seven, nine. But... Unicorn, my ass. It's like, come. I, Bro, mean, I can't wait. I, on, can't wait I mean, what? I can't wait for the Joker to get mashed up with him in the Western Conference Finals. You're gonna abuse that dude. Come on, I mean, man. I'm talking. You made thirty million dollars this year, and you added <laughs> what nine points to your team's total? Nine points. <laughs> Right, and he's playing his off, bro. He doesn't do anything in the paint. I watch him; like his game is so European, like the epitome of what, like hangs around the perimeter. He used to be athletic as fuck. I don't know what happened to him. Like he was dunking on people. Like he he was a terror down low. They did say he was playing good defense yesterday. I don't know how, but I mean, if he's bringing, I don't, I don't see him. Who's he defending? Who's he guarding? Right. He's playing great saying. defense. Come on. He, so I don't know. I don't know. That guy needs. That's what I'm saying. You're right. If he decides to show up, it'll be a different game. But if if he's the same player, that's why I said I don't think the Clippers can lose. As long as playoff Paul shows yeah, up. Yeah. Playoff Paul. <laughs> playoff Paul, not pandemic P. <laughs> yeah. That's you too. You got two. So. It, It'll all be about who shows up. Luke has never been in a game seven before, has he? No. No, last year they went to six, right? Last year they went right. to six games for the series. Yeah. Where all Clippers um uh, so, uh, I honestly I just I think, you know, more so on the Clippers side, not only is it home court, staples will be rocking. They have right. no more Laker games to worry about. There's no more Laker games. It's all Clippers now. You're gonna have everybody there. If they lose that game, if they lose this, Clippers are done. They might, they might, they might as well, they might as well move to North Dakota. This is their chance right now. This is where you take over. LA will burn the you, fuck down. Let me. <laughs> if you yeah, can't win this game, to take lose, over. If they lose, does Ty Lue go? It's over. That's an interesting question. Uh, Both coaches gone. Both Ty Lue should he, he should have never got the job to be honest. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that that real. I never oh, thought fuck. he should have been the coach of that team. But um, I would say he's on a hot seat for sure to start the next season. <clears throat> I mean, I so you hit on it a little bit. What? Which um, which your uh, which your jab at Persingis? You got the Nuggets deeper in the playoffs. What do you want? What do you think, Jokers? What do you guys think you do? Nuggets and six? I'm not picking because I'm going to jinx his boys. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. It's good. Be, all I hear is Suns. All I hear is Suns. No, I would pick the Nuggets, honestly. That's what I'm picking. Where, See, I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stay sleep on us. Stay sleep on us. We've been, since Murray's gone down, we've been 16 and seven since the Murray injury. In the playoff, Will Barton hasn't been back. Like, we've been rocking with or without our best. Like, we have the best. Someone laughed. Is Nikola Jokic the best player in the league? He's top three. Mm. You know? Yeah, I would say, I would oh, say wait, top three, top best five. Player? His, his, top def- five. his defense is so bad, though. Oh, my. He pissed me is, off. Really? Defense, That's man. the thing. So we footed. We get into a debate about Nikola Jokic. His defense is. Not nearly as bad as what it's made out to be. He's third. He's in the top five in the league in defensive win shares behind Rudy Gobert, Julius Randle, and someone else. He might be third. His assist, his steal number percentage is off the charts. He's got great hands for a center. His job isn't to protect the rim the way Joe Allen Beads is not, and it's because he can't. But also, he's going to risk getting stupid fouls if he tries to rim protect. So. I tell you this, when, it, when Jokic was down there, every time he was down there, Afrini Simmons went down there and scored. It, right, it, he's, that, he's, he's, once, once it's one on one in a drive situation, <laughs> he, he's horrible. But he he sets people up on defense. He's great position. It's just yeah, he gets beat because he's slow as shit and he can't jump. He does get beat, but. It's little nuances and stuff. I'll go to bat for this. Man. I'm not saying he's an all-league defender. I'm not saying he's 
a great defender. I'm just saying he is not a terrible defender. His defensive rating on the court is he, okay. I'll tell you this: out of all the centers that's left in the NBA playoffs right now, he may have the worst defense out of all those guys. Am I wrong by saying that? I'm thinking. But you got to factor in, too, rebounding is a huge part of defense. He cleans up on the defensive glass. That's a huge part yeah. of defense, mm-hmm. then now defensive possessions. I keep saying that okay. shit, man. Rebounding is an underrated thing, man. So like you think then, rebounds underrated? Underrated for Absolutely. Sure in terms of defense. Absolutely. Okay. Look at you're him giving your whole time, and you're not getting them any chances. AD is I don't disagree. I believe. I tell you this: with rebounds, you have to break it down. If you just go by the numbers, that's what makes it overrated. If you go by how they rebound, box out, and limit rebounds from the opposing team, that's when you're showing something. But when you just look at numbers. You can literally get a rebound if nobody else gets the ball. Think well, that. Yoke, You're just Yoke getting the ball. Top five rebounder, you get what I'm saying? He's a top yeah, five I do. So if you if you if you look at it by the number, then that's when you that's when you overrate it. But when you break it down to the fact that the guy is box not the guy, he's getting X amount of defensive rebounds and limiting second chances with the opposing team, that's when it becomes an important stat. Yeah, do you see the way Jokic one hand snags some of these balls with like the side of his hand like this? The way he just <laughs> snags it that normal people wouldn't be able to get? He's a top five rebounder in the league, bro. No, no, no. Tips, the thing that he, he does that I love the tips. most is he'll 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 snap he'll snag it and then like he's looking up court already to throw right. the ball up court. Right. It's, it's really it's really watching him play. It's really, it's really beautiful. Besides, when somebody's driving on him, because he just, he's just like, Ole! he just, he's not gonna do that. He's like better that. than Dubai. He's better <laughs> than Dubai for sure. He, he posts, he makes a lot of Dubai, and he's better than who's the center on the Mavs right now? Center on the Mavs, if I'm not mistaken, I know they got Boban. Is Boban starting for them? No, but he's playing good minutes. I know he's I'll playing a lot what, of a lot of minutes. A lot of minutes. I'll tell you what, yeah. Boban yeah. puts in work against Jokic. There's some about him both them both. Yes, he does. Bro, Boban puts in work when they play the Nuggets. Like he knows how to play Jokic. I like both. Bo- They're both Serbian. They both played on the national team together. They both played on a professional. Like mm-hmm. those two know each other. So Boban makes puts in work on Jokic. I'll give him that. Oh, I'll take it back. It's actually Przingis. He's the. I think he's playing center now, right. so he's the so worst center you. right now in the playoffs. Is yeah, because Maxi, a uh, Maxi Kelber got hurt. Yeah, that's Maxie, right. Oh damn. So yeah, so that's my thoughts on the yeah. Nuggets. Everyone can stay asleep. I'm predicting another Western Conference Finals appearance. You know, it depends on who we, it. I I think we'll be playing the Mavs in the Western Conference Finals, and. I mean, I would love to see the Sixers and the Nuggets in the finals. That would be dope. That's my that's my dream finals right there. That's my dream finals right there too. Be my uh, what? my my Sixers yeah, sure. versus the Nuggets because I'm a, I'm a I'm a huge no, no, Carmelo no, 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 Anthony no, no, no. fan. I will go my get bad. the jersey right now and everything. My bus. You so said be, I'm, that's cool. I'm that'll okay be. with that part. The Mavs versus the Nuggets. No, they might not. Clippers, no, no, bro. no, no, no. You said Sixers versus the Nuggets. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I get what That's you're saying. the part I, I was wait. Saying. What? Come on, bud. For real? I, I <laughs> thought you said they might not. They they might not even beat the Clippers, right? And and that nah. was going. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't. I, I don't would, see the Mavericks winning. I don't see the Mavericks winning. I would say it'd be Clippers Nuggets. That's who I'm going with. No, wait, jazz. Gonna be serious. Yeah, yeah, keep I keep omitting the jazz, man. Like I can't do that, man, because they are good. I think you can. You think so? I think you can. Yeah. The, the, Chris, the Jazz they all uh, you guys have you guys have different feelings than me about the jazz. Um I'm not too too big on the jazz. I, I said all year that you know, you know I just Firm believer of them, to be honest. Just not a firm believer. Um, but we talked about the Nuggets. Let's talk about the Sixers. Down, um, game four. It's been in the quality first quarter. 
he actually played out the quarter after he got hurt and um went on to lose the game, went on to win game five by what was it, 23, 26 points, ended up winning by without Embiid for a whole game. If you have to play game one without Joel Embiid, do you think the Sixers have a chance? Yes. Absolutely. Hold on one second. Where'd Christian go? He got knocked out. I'm inviting him back right now. Okay. So, anyway, I I think, what, against the Hawks? Yeah. I I don't think the Hawks are are ready to take that next step. But um, I don't know, man. It just seems like that's a three-team race, really, and two of the teams are playing each other. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't really see. Yeah, Atlanta. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. And maybe I'm wrong with Atlanta, man. They, they, they have one of the better records in, in the, uh, the East since. Uh, they were like 31 and seven. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was going to say that, yeah, they, they, they heat up at the right, they had heated up at the right time. They have a really good offense. Um, it seems like pretty much after they traded Rondo was when they started to ascend. Um, so I, I don't know how that worked out, but it, um, them making that move in the trade, but the trade worked out for them as far as the team goes. And, um, I mean, I think it's going to come down to a couple of things for the Sixers versus the Hawks. Um, first off, it's going to be the inside game. You know, Embiid, if he doesn't play in that first game, you know, you're going to have um, Clint Capella and John Collins in the middle for the Hawks. Who are going to think they're going to be able to do whatever they want? I mean, for the Sixers, our backup center is Dwight Howard. And behind him, we really don't have anybody. We, we put Mike Scott in the other day to play um, after Dwight Howard. So. That's just to show you, I mean, it's it's going to come down to the inside, rebounding and things like that. And then on the yeah, perimeter, we know who we got on the perimeter. You got Trey Young and Ben Simmons. Uh, that should be interesting, them going back and forth. Um, ben Simmons defensively versus Trey Young offensively, of course. But, man, I, ben is, I think Ben is going to give Trey fits, man. So that's going to be the difference of that series right there. Mm-hmm. I really do. I, I I like Ben mm-hmm. defensively. I think he's one of the best I, players I, in the league in that regard, man. So wait, I, so I, Brian, I got cut off when you were saying, "Hold on, hold on." You were saying, "Okay, wait, what did you say?" I was saying, "Bud, like you you said that the Clippers." Yeah, I know. I realize that's right. What you're talking about? I'm just high. I want to see. I'm so. I don't know who's gonna win that series, bro. I I think the Clippers are gonna win, but I would love to see. <laughs> like. But I I don't know. It's fifty fifty. That series, there's a lot of uh, in, a lot of what ifs in that series for guys who've never played in those big games, guys who have played in them and haven't performed. Like I watched Paul George completely shit the bed last year against the Nuggets, and he's balling. shots off the backboard and shit. Like so. But I'm kind of biased. I, I, I had that discussion earlier too with that. I had the discussion earlier too about playoff P and last year how he was pandemic P. It it was very how can I say uncharacteristic for him. Um, he has been in the playoffs, and considering that the guy broke his leg in 2014, for him for like him. seven years after that to still be able to perform. I mean, he's guy. doing his job. I mean, had, he's just... He hasn't had so. a great series since Indiana. He hasn't had a great playoff series. The only reason why he's playoff P is because of those because of Roy Hibbert. I mean, he's a great defender, but those... And the dog. Because of Roy Hibbert. The, the, the Pacers to Heat finals, that Pacers Heat series two years is what made the legend of Paul, playoff Paul, like... Look, like, that dunk on Birdman is what made him the legend he was, man. Come on, man. That wait, dunk wait, on wait. Birdman. <laughs> oh, yeah. The dunk on Birdman gave him the, got him the invite to the Olympic team. They broke his leg. Right. I mean, I mean, that was the thing that started everything. It started everything right. for him. It started everything for him. Well, but since then, saying, all right. So, the same said, wise, even in Oklahoma City, even in, uh, like, he, he has not been the same. 
performer playoff wise mm-hmm. as he was in those in his Indiana years. Nah, but I, see, like I'm I'm biased with I have because to he's one of my favorites. I like Paul George, so yeah. I, I'm I'm a fan of two way players. Big fan. Of I don't two-way. dislike. He is a great two way, but I think he's overrated. I like him as a player. I don't think he's. I don't know. I just. No, I'm not going to say he's this damn bona fide stud lockdown defender that he was. He was. He was that, but he ain't what he was. The clear number two to Kawhi on the team. Would you? Agree? Oh, absolutely. Right. So, mm-hmm. and, and I, do you think two, that's his issue? Do you think that his issue was more so? Do you think it's more so here that at one point he went from being this player that was sinking up in the league? He went from, you know, drafted where he was after that to being and people to, were to talking going up to higher regard. He five, signed a right. deal. Everything, you know, saying he had a crazy dunk in a dunk contest with the lights off and the glow in the dark jersey and everything, the Tron outfit, pretty much whatever the case may be. And he breaks his leg and then he comes back, you know, and then he leads his team to the playoffs again, leads it to the Eastern Conference Finals and things like that. He was so close to being LeBron, so close. And then he gets traded to OKC. He plays with the, he plays with the MVP. He actually played good that year, just to just to let you know. In Utah, he only had one big game. It was the last game. We had five points, but every other game, he scored over 18 points. He actually had two 30-point games in that series, too. So he did have one good series after Indiana. But after that, it just wasn't the same. Was, was so Mello, do you, was Mello do you really think his issue that is that he can't – He was playing with Melo and Russ. That's the problem. Do you think it <laughs> – Mellow and Russ. He played with Mellow, Russ. Think about that team. That team was I, – I hated the way it looked because when they traded for Mello, my first thought was he has to come off the bench only because there isn't enough space on the floor. And then when they had him as a starter, you had Mello, Paul, Russell, and you had Andre Robinson who can't shoot. And then you had Adam. Even three can't ISO do. players. Yeah, three ISO players. <laughs> I instantly just, said he has to come off the, the bench because it's not enough space. But yeah, but Doc, look, had a different idea. I mean, I love Mello, but let's face it, man, he ain't Denver Nuggets Mello. He ain't New York Knicks Mello, and he wasn't that in OKC or Houston. You know what I mean? So I thought it was mm-hmm. a bad move. You know? Uh, yes, definitely a bench player. Making uh, him a starter, bad idea. Yeah, the, I mean, at this point in his career, I mean, that's okay, you know. I still and love the guy, man. Especially after you guys what? ever see LeBron <laughs> ever uh, adjusting his role to become that in the NBA? Mm, hell no. He'll retire first. I, what I was, if it's to play with his son? What see if it's to play with Bron? Only because... If it, I was about to say... If it's the play with Bronny, I can see him doing it. Okay, I, fair I, point. I, I don't know. I, I just can't see him doing it. Though. I don't. I mean, he'll have to be like something at that point. point. Why would he be starting? Why would he be starting? Why would he be starting at that point? Well, Genie Bus called him the greatest. All right, of all and time, then so he, they might. If Genie Bus, yeah, well, that's because, because that's time. because <laughs> that's crazy to me. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know much. Shit. Uh, and Phil Jackson has her hitting that. Good. Of. That's crazy. How are you gonna call a dude that's won one chip and been there what three years? The greatest of all time. Man, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Disrespecting Kobe like that. Activated playoff and man. magic. And lost. And magic. Activated. And <laughs> man, come on, even going back to him before him. Derek Fisher. That's a Green. Derek Fisher. Elgin Baylor. Come on, man. Like ooh, stop. <laughs> Robin Horry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Rick Fox. <laughs> Eddie Jones. Well, Yo, what are we doing Bobby here? Nick, Nick oh. Van Exel. Oh, Come God. on. Man. Those are all kind of There's a lot of names, man. I don't know, hey. man. She's little, she said that he's better than all those guys. That's amazing. Whew. Man, Quan's just playing. Let me not do that. <laughs> Look. James Worthy is more of an all-time James great Worthy, Laker. Yeah. Than she, LeBron James is. Stop it. 
Seriously. Yo, so did you guys talk about the Hawks uh, yeah. 76ers? <laughs> Do what now? We actually did, did hit on that a little Hawks? bit. You want to um, add some on that? I just the, the Hawks is the Hawks lineup is deep, bro. I look like I've been looking at the last couple of weeks, and they have a bunch of score. They have mm-hmm. dudes who can score at any time on that team. And Collins is no mm-hmm. slouch, man. I mean, but still, I just I like Philly better defensively. Yeah, but is Embiid playing? What's wrong with his knee? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Did they well, say the this is what was said. I, I love that you brought it up because I feel like there was an overreaction to him getting hurt. So at first they said that he will not play in game five. And everybody said the Sixers are done. They're done. They're done. They're done. They're done. Mm-hmm. They just he was missing one game. They didn't say he was missing multiple games. So at, at that point, I don't know if it's that small tear where he'll only one game yet. We'll find out soon, though. That's all I can say about that. But, I mean, it just everybody just totally wrote off the six years because he had a small tear, they said, and he was missing game five. They never said he was out for the whole series or if he'll miss the whole playoffs or he'll miss any weeks or anything like that. So, it was over reaction feel, by everybody. I think I think we'll be fine. I do feel like this, though, just to kind of – sorry to interrupt, guys. With, those, with the Sixers, they'll go as far as Danny Green – and damn, Curry will take them. If those guys are on and they're hitting buckets, they're going to lock them down defensively, man. And I just I don't see them beating the Sixers. I say, I say go six. And who, who's guarding Trey Young? Who's the, ben. I mean, is it going to be six? Ben. Or yeah, absolutely. Ben's going to guard him. Ben's going to guard him. Ben, ben Simmons is going to guard him. <laughs> You have to. You're gonna have Ben you have Simmons. To. You're gonna throw. You're gonna throw Ben Simmons or Danny Green at him the whole game. Those guys no, you are have a lot to. of length, man. Trey Young is a smooth you, guy, bro. You have to cut the head off. To get over. All right. He's, doing a lot yeah. of pick and rolls. He's gonna have to shoot over the top. Pick and rolls for him. A lot of it. Well, we'll switch for sure. I mean, you think about yeah. the perimeter. You got Hell Ben, not gonna Danny, be rim and Steph. On him and then, that's the thing. Mm-mm. But if Embiid's oh, not well, playing, yeah, yeah. And then, if Embiid isn't, playing, then do you have Dwight after that? And then, like I said earlier, after Dwight, we got we, got, we played Mike Scott. So I, 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 that's when I start losing my mind. That's when I start yeah, losing my mind. After I would. Dwight, so you know, Mike Scott. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Elton Brand better play this game. <laughs> Come up, <laughs> but um. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You're gonna come out the front office. We do have we do have a good bench though. All right, come out the front office with a with a uniform on. We do right. have a good bench. You know, Tyrese Maxey, Forcon Cormaz, who who was on fire last game. I don't know if you guys watched it at all. And yeah. defensively, he's been locked in a lot more. So I was actually Let's really see. happy about that. I, Jake Milton I is another guy, bro. and he got Matisse Thybul. Mm-hmm. Thybul. Mm-hmm. I love his. I love. I love the way he plays the game. He plays so scrappy and hard. He's got a lost a couple of minutes this year, but he's finding his way back, and he's definitely playing really good. All right, so all right, you got that all NBA covered. Playoffs. Let's talk what? about this. Let's talk about okay. something that nobody else is talking about right now. We got the NBA draft lottery approaching on June twenty second. We got seventeen days until that happens. Who do you think is going to get the first pick in the NBA draft lottery right now? Odds are saying Chicago. Houston Rockets will get it. Chicago gets it. No, I'm just kidding. Chicago <laughs> and I think Min- oh Minnesota's pick is top five. What do you guys think right? though? Yeah, I do. I do believe so. I yes. mean, Chicago Chicago don't even yes. have a pick, man. They traded their pick for, to Orlando for damn, uh, what's the Total name? Magic. Yep. Yeah. For, um, who is, the, is the Timberwolves pick top five protected? Yes. Top five so. protected for the Timberwolves. But you brought up something interesting, Brian. Oh, we did. Magic have two picks possibly mm-hmm. in the top eight. And they have Cole Anthony. I, How quick I think, they turn I, things I, around there? 
I think they're actually going to be the one that gets the top pick, man. They just got they got some balls in there. Bro. I think I think <laughs> I think that uh, I think they may actually be able to uh swindle it, and being that um that pick is top eight, if they can get number one and number eight, they're gonna do a, they're gonna do some some crazy stuff. Top three, if they can get two and eight. That's gonna. But the question is, who's the number the, one pick? Yeah, number one Probably pick. Thug. Probably thug. Mm. It's a Boom. deep draft, man. It's a deep draft. Is there deep any draft. really clear cut number one though? I don't know. Nope. I mean, I'm asking. Nope. <laughs> no. I mean, there sucks is out I mean, because you have. You got you got Suggs, Cunningham, which everybody right. which everybody knows Everybody's about. High you got, on um, what's, right. you got, nobody's really as high on Luke Cars as they were in, as he was in college. I haven't heard much about, uh, much traffic about, about him right. coming into the draft. But if you watch him play, he's kind of I mean he's he's a to me he's a great college basketball player, but he I don't know if he's gonna transition well into mm-hmm. Today's like game, he might be on the bench or some shit like that, but I just don't see him like a star center. No, he's like a white hipper. Yeah, slow foot, <laughs> definitely he's slow foot. He he also, old, he's good for the old style of basketball. He's not good for the new transition of how they want. You got the two play. guys. You got the two guys that decided to go to the uh the G League. Also, you got Jonathan Kaminga. And Jalen Green, they, those two guys have been professionally trained. They've been training this whole time in the NBA, pretty much in a uh, league. Those guys are also um, possible picks to be in the top. Got uh, um, interesting picks like McCore Moore, I mean Maker, who is Thorn Maker's cousin, who is uh, pretty much a seven foot point guard, well point four it over point guard abilities. Um, it's Mitchell a, from Baylor. Guy. It's really interesting. The kid Mitchell yes. from Baylor. It just, yeah. You keep you keep naming the names and you keep looking and you keep thinking you're gonna keep other names. You also a player when he was in high school and before he decided to leave high school early, um, due to some family issues, you have Kyrie Walker coming in his so who was the number one player in the country when he was a junior. So it's it's really deep. It's really it's really, really deep. I'm um, looking at this right now. But um, let's get to the real interesting thing. Let's get to the main event of the weekend, Sunday, last day of the week, or week, depending on your preference. We fight coming on. We got the, we got, we got the king, they said. We got the greatest fighter of all time, some people believe. Mayweather makes his return in an exhibition match <laughs> against Jake Paul, a YouTuber. What is Jake Paul's chance? Is it, uh, are they realistic? Does he have a puncher's chance? He comes in. Now, this is something interesting. Mayweather usually fights at 147. He usually fights at 147. This fight, if I'm not mistaken, will be four and at 18. Do you think that heightens Jake Paul's chances? Uh, it's Logan Paul, first off. His brother, his older brother. Oh, Logan Paul, I'm sorry. I, see, look, I, 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 care. So, I care so little about them. That's how, that's how right. Logan Paul. There we go. That's the I mean, thing. Usually, marketing. usually 180. Who is Paul? Paul. He he lost to a YouTuber. He lost to KSI, who makes rap. And I mean, come on, he's a British rapper, bro, who does amateur boxing. Like, and look, say what you want about Mayweather, man. If you're talking about boxing, no, I mean he's one of the better defensive boxers in the history of the game. Maybe the best Mm -hmm. the game. But yeah, so. I, this is ridiculous, man. I mean, marketing genius, sure, whatever. He's done well for himself in that regard. But this shit is stupid, if you ask me. Yeah, it's like the real life version of celebrity deathmatch, but people aren't killing each other, you know. So, but what do you do? You, do you think about this though? May they're, they're expecting Mayweather to get up to one hundred and sixty pounds. Jake, I mean Logan Paul. Oh my God, he's allowed to be. Up to 190. Every pound that he's over 190, though, he'll get a fine of $100,000 for each pound. So you're looking at a possible 30 pound advantage for him. 
Now look, if he if he happens to catch him chance? on the chin with a clean shot, you know. Mm, but uh, I, I mean, I've watched him. I just don't see it. Just, he's all power. You know, there's no finesse to his boxing. He's he's gonna get right. tired after, like in his two fights that he fought, he would win it after like three or four rounds. Like it's gonna be Floyd's gonna let him throw haymakers for the first couple rounds, tire him out, and then. Floyd's probably going to just beat up on him because he wants to. I don't know how in shape Floyd is, though, but I'm assuming he can't be that out of shape. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, he's we talking can... about he wants to train Deontay Wilder for his third fight against Ferry, so I think he's in really good shape right now. But go ahead, B. I'm sorry. I mean, you can throw punches and all that, man, but can you actually box? And I, he can't. So I don't think mm-hmm. this is even worth a conversation to me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> the real the well, real you want to get a little bit more wacky? Is Go ahead. Get a little bit more right, wacky. I think Chris thing. is about to hit on it. So it's being shown on Showtime, right? I don't know. Is it? Yep. Is it Triller? Is Triller the one doing it? Yes. So it is a Showtime pay per view fight because Jake Paul, I mean, what was his name? Lope actually has a Showtime deal now, so he actually has a boxing deal now. I don't, what? I, I just the thing is that their boxing is becoming like a freak sideshow now. At this That's point. bullshit, man, mm-hmm. because it's dying as a sport. There's no <laughs> great, there's too many, there's way too many fucking divisions. There's like most people. Watch MMA anyways. The, yeah. they're, they're switching over to, to better combat sports. Boxing is dying as a sport. It's still a great sport, but it's it's, it's I definitely don't not what it was. So much money involved in it now. Who who's paying for all these pay per views? Because I know we're not. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Because I I know I wouldn't even I wouldn't even dare to even think about paying sixty dollars or a hundred dollars for a fight. And that's why when but Dana somehow White, Dana White people still are. are you, for the last fight, it's it, it's really it's really crazy. I I don't even I don't understand how they think maybe they're gonna make hundred million dollars from this from this exhibition. It's an exhibition. It's ridiculous. Right. It's not even. Ridiculous. It won't even count. It won't even count. It won't even count. Even if he gets knocked out, knocked and Dick, out. Right. Logan Paul looks impressive. It w- it wouldn't even count. But so, he's yes. got that. He's got that claim though. I was that guy that knocked him out. But I do not see that. No, he's, his, his his is to knock him out and retire boxing, so he can retire as the greatest fighter of all time. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. That is not going to do it for you. <laughs> so, talk about it. The Paul brothers, are they good for boxing? Yes or no? Marketing, sure, but good for the sport. I mean, they're they're bringing in a young generation of fans. That, that they are. They're bringing eyeballs to it. Mm-hmm. You also you also got to think they're gaining interest to boxing again. Remember, for a long time. People wanted to box. It was a really good thing to do. It was a big thing to do. And you also, you remember Olympics was really big. You know, we were winning some medals. Yeah, what, Floyd right. Mayweather, Ray Jones Jr. You know, yeah, all those guys. Mike Tyson, it goes, it goes so far. I always yeah. remember our American boxers. I can Boy, love God. you, an American boxer from the 2000s that won us a medal. I can't tell you besides Clarissa Shields. That's the only one I can tell you about. That's it. I can't tell you any male. I can't. And... I think what they're doing, it may seem like a freak show, like you said, but it's good. It's a good thing for boxing. It's more eyes, it needs more entrance, and it needs more people to get involved into it. Um, boxing at one point, you think about all the trilogies, we think about all the great fights we had over time. I mean, as Americans, we always loved boxing. I was boxing was America's second greatest sport at one point in time. And it was baseball first, and then boxing was second because people were crazy for boxing. I mean, at one time, I mean, remember the fight when the guy propelled him? He had the he had the freaking uh, parachute on his back and things yeah. like that. I mean, yeah. we go crazy for boxing. We always go crazy for boxing. And you speaking of Prince, going crazy, Prince we got yeah. Prince Nassim. He came in on a flying carpet. I mean, how can you forget uh, that? Yeah. Like, how can you? I, love- I mean. 
boxing was always a, a fair event and everything. We got a box tomorrow on a Sunday, so this is different. It's gonna be interesting. On no, this card, tonight, we have bro. another fight. At midnight. The thing is, the fight is tonight. It's tomorrow. Projecting that they're gonna go on at midnight. That's why it says Sunday. What? Really? Yeah, it's confusing. It? Hold on. It's tonight. Hold on. With Dustin, yeah, well, I, I had a whole conversation. Well, it's it was sparked on in the association on a post, but it's tonight. No, it's Sunday, June 6th. I'm looking at it right now. Sunday, June 6th. Bro, um, what time? Um, I think it's that at midnight. Eight. I'm, I'm, look at the under. Yeah. Under. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It says, takes place on Sunday, June 6th. Pay-per-view coverage starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Play okay. Floyd and um, J Logan Paul will be at, at 10 o'clock tomorrow. That's when their fight is. But also on that card, we got an interesting fight. We got Chad Ocho Cinco versus Byron <laughs> Maxwell. Did you say Chad? <laughs> Chad Ocho Come Cinco on. versus Byron Maxwell. This is what? This guy that's coming in. That's two and two versus Ocho. Ocho versus Science takes on boxing. Let's do this. Let's go, Ocho. What's the Ocho chances, guys? It's like a three-round fight. Does he survive one round? Oh, my gosh. I don't even know what to say. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I know Chad what? Johnson can beat up his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> oh, oh, man, that's rough, <laughs> man. I don't know. I like Chad, too. I'm not even yes. I'm just saying. Like, I never – no one – you never heard about his hands, you know? Greg Hardy. I mean, this. Mm -hmm. Greg Hardy. He's not, he's not we got, we're, we're gonna see. We're gonna see a Nate Robinson recap. That's what we're gonna see. Oh, the, I hope not. Because <laughs> Ocho's gotta go on that podcast. <laughs> Boy, yeah, yeah. that's what I gotta say. He's gotta make. He gotta make. I am athlete tomorrow. He gotta make. Right. If he makes it tomorrow, I'll give. I'll. I'll clap. But. He's going against a guy. Okay, I'll, I'll give you some details of Byron Maxwell. You tell me if he has a chance. Byron Maxwell is 2-2 two two in MMA. He is 0-3 as a boxer. But also... <laughs> that was bare knuckle boxing. Record. We're talking that about... Bare knuckle boxer. Oh, my God. Dude. The dude is at least a trained fighter. He's like, talking like, about a I wide mean, receiver. Like... This dude gets hit in the face for a living. Uh, Chad Jones is pretty, bro. This is ridiculous. I'm sorry to be laughing at it, but <laughs> damn. I don't stay, he doesn't stand a chance. There's not a chance. Uh, this is the <laughs> There's a I, reason I think, why. I think the one thing he needs celebrities have done. He tried. No, I'll, gi I'll give him this. They said Chad Johnson has taken his training seriously, and the Charlo brothers have trained him. <laughs> so he's been trained by some top fighters. Um, and <laughs> also like has kept guys. himself in very, very good shape. <laughs> but, yeah. I, ooh, everybody has a puncher's chance. Everybody has a puncher's chance. It will come down to if Ocho can land a headbutt or not, though. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> bad joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Recapping with the bros, uh, guys. This was a, this was this was fun. Brian, put him in what some, you? you know, in some hot girl summer clothes. <laughs> I'll give him some red bottoms. They gotta give him some red bottoms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> say say his name wrong or something. Go so through, oh, not go through his phone. See, go stupid. <laughs> Right, right. It's yo. That's the world we live in. It's wacky. I, I, I can't wait to see celebrities do MMA to join the UFC and try to. I mean, oh, we did see that. CM Punk. All that right, is so right. Celebrity, would you pay to see box? Oh boy. Box. Oh man. Denzel. Let's put forty-five in the ring with somebody. No. Is that forty-five? Donald Trump in the ring. God, I heard you that. <laughs> I want to see fake news. I didn't get knocked. I didn't get knocked up. Yeah, Vin fake Diesel, news. Vin, you know, Vin Diesel. Funny story. 
<laughs> if you look him up on YouTube, put in Vin Diesel breakdancing, you will change your whole perspective of Vin Diesel. He was a b-boy. So what? That I can see that. <laughs> have you have you not seen Boiler Room? Vin Diesel was a, no, he was. A... <laughs> I love Vin Diesel, bro. It doesn't Vin surprise Diesel. me one bit. That don't surprise me. I mean, <laughs> Boiler Room will tell you that. Triple X. That is hilarious. I, I can't believe I, I can't believe it was Vin Diesel break when I was younger. Like I when I seen that ten years ago, there's no way. And he was literally breaking. I want to see Chris like Brown box. Right. Kind of like Mark Wahlberg being uh a Marky Mark. Drake, Drake, like Mark Drake, Wahlberg Drake, Drake, being Drake, Mark, Mark. Marky Mark. <laughs> Marky. 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 Bunch, you don't remember that? Yeah, Wacky world of, of music. Right. I got, I got one better than you. Do you remember when Macho Man was a rapper? Randy Savage what? released his rap album. Get the fuck out of here. He sold five thousand copies. Yo, <laughs> I wonder how I gotta find this. Today. I gotta find this. My oh man. And All right, so are we re are we done here, fellas? So we close the right, show, guys. Here. Well, this was a great first rap with the bros. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah, let's. That's that news. This was not. I checked in the so well, but no, we talked a lot. Uh, this was fun. Um, you guys got any last things you want to close? You know what? I'm gonna be watching tonight. Back and forth with the Bucks and the Nets, but. Right here. Go socks. Fuck the socks. Fuck the socks. <laughs> you said what? I said fuck the socks. <laughs> the red socks, that Steven calls them. Go socks. Go socks. What about you, Chris? How much are you watching tonight? I'm watching the Bucks game. The... I'm watching the Bucks game uh -huh. tonight. I'm watching the Bucks game, and then uh, my birthday's on Monday, so I'm just... I'm, oh, I'm shit. going to the gun range tomorrow. I'm going I'll to check out tomorrow. the Rosenstreet fight to see what he's going to do. So, yeah, I'm going to watch all oh, oh. All right. Well, I'm, getting off. No. I'm sure I'll catch you guys in the chat. I'll holler. They need more fans there. You got to go to a Rockies game for your birthday. Any more fans there? <laughs>